said you can bury the workman, but the work will go on. You can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the spirit's moving, his will will be done. You can bury the workman, but the work will go on. Glorious fight to start. Was the 
Savior, she's loving kindness overcame and won my heart. Many say that I'm too noisy, but I'll tell you the reason why. If they only felt the glory, they would shout as well as I.
blessings, you ain't received. It's awesome, praise, praise God. Give them, Lord.
That's good singing. Good singing. Now, as long as I have grace, I will praise Him. And you're going to have grace. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Right on and on and on and on. And the Bible said, Obey them that have the rule over you in the Lord, who watch over your soul, that they may not do it in grief, but considering the end of their conversation. What's the end of the conversation of the preacher man? What's the last thing that he's got to say to you? That's the way the Word of God wrote it. The end of their conversation. Consider it. What is it? Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. That's the end of the conversation. Thank God, thank God. Well, it's something how the devil in our minds works and this morning we had just a great great service and tonight we in our minds we maybe feel like that it ain't that high tonight that it ain't as high as it was in far, and as far as people doing stuff in service you know maybe it ain't but i'd like to just do something tonight i'd like to dedicate this to the devil i'd like to march around the church before the preacher comes in a low tone right now and just say thank you lord I don't have to have no music. Don't have to have none. Amen. Don't have to have none of that singing. I love it all. Amen. Don't have to be here for 25 more marches. I can do it at the lowest time to say thank you, God. Amen. And it ain't the lowest time, but it's good for us to praise the Lord. Is that not right? Right. He's good to us. I thank you tonight. I want to be faithful when it's high. Faithful when it's low. I want to be a soldier. Amen. When I'm amongst the Come on. I want to be a soldier when I'm all by myself. Amen. I want to be a soldier, thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tonight. That's good singing tonight, saints of God. I appreciate it. I'm excited. I'm ready for revival. I wish it's starting right now. I do. I wish it's starting right now. But we're going to pray and ask God to help Brother Jacob tonight. Can we bow our heads? Let's ask God to give him power. Father, in the name of the Lord, I pray God that you'd anoint our brother tonight, Lord. We appreciate him. And we're glad to see how he's grown in you, Lord, and become a man of God. And I pray for him tonight, Lord. You give him the message to challenge our heart to get close to you, Lord. God, to hear help somebody that's not right, Lord. Find the ways to Jesus. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you, God, for what you've given, what you've done. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's one of them mics. God bless you, preacher. Thank God. Amen. It's good to be here tonight. Uh, enjoyed the meeting we had this morning. Um, I'll be honest with you, Heaven, Lord. as long as you're honest with me, uh, we all go through things, and it's life, but uh, I've had one of the roughest weeks this week that I've had in a long time, and uh, Heaven, Lord. going up to this morning, I was kind of dreading to preach, to be honest with you, and I, I got it, and uh, everybody was obeying the Lord, and getting in, and feeling God, and I was behind them 100%, and uh, Jason said, I hope he doesn't preach tonight, and I said, me either. <laughs> And uh, but it didn't work out that way, and the Lord has laid something on my heart. He's going to uh, one of the hardest times to study is when you have so many things on your mind, and the reason being is because when you, as a preacher, most of you know, you, you get down, you pray, and you study, and throughout the week you're praying, but you get to that point to where you study and you're finding something in God, and you're just waiting on Him to lay it on your heart. And I had about seven different messages that I have scribbled out and marked out, and I knew it wasn't the Lord. And this is the one that he laid on my heart. And if you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter number 11. Matthew, chapter number 11. We're going to be reading one verse. I've asked a few people to help me tonight, but if you, if I don't call on you, I, the Lord just took it a different way. Amen. But I truly believe that there are some things that we as Christians have allowed Satan to get in our lives. Not bad things, just things that he might have taken a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yeah. And he's he's come in, and the Bible said he came to kill, steal, and destroy. Right. He's come as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He has come to do no good, and he's come to do harm. Amen. And tonight, Brother Jason Dunn said he wants to uh, give Satan a black eye, and if the Lord would help me, that's what we're going to try to do. Matthew chapter number 11. Read one verse. Verse, verse number 12. 
And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And that's all I'd like to read. Now, that last phrase of that verse, and the violent take it by force. Amen. So tonight, if the Lord would help me just for a few moments, I'm not a long-winded preacher, never have been, don't know if I ever will be. I learned a long time ago when I preached about 40 minutes one time, 20 minutes of it was God, the other 20 was stuff I'd studied out and tried to throw in there. And when God's done, I'm done. Right. But if the Lord would help me, I want to preach on it's yours for the taking. Yeah. It's yours for the taking. And that's all that I feel led to preach on. But I was praying and studying and asking God if he would just help me. Because things haven't been easy this week. I'll be honest, they just haven't. And I found that through life, things just go wrong and things go down. And there's nothing that we can do about it. And we look around and we say, God, I need you here and I need you now. And we say, Lord, I don't understand where this is going from, where this is, where this is coming from. How in the world am I going to get through it? And sometimes as a God, uh, he looks down at you and he says, I'm here, but you've got to do the work. Sometimes as God, he looks at you and says, uh, I am a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I am the man that died on Calvary. Uh, but there's some things you've got to do on your own. Now, I have friends here and there and everywhere. Friend is one of my good friends, and Lord, if, if he would help me, I'm going to get him to help me here in just a few minutes, but he chose a good outfit to wear tonight. I was wearing that same one this morning. I'm wearing it now. Hey, Amen. And I'm so thankful to have friends, but when you go throughout the Bible, you can see that there's never a time that God has not been faithful to his people. There's never a time that God has not looked down on his people. Hey, Amen. And if we look throughout the Old Testament time and time again, uh, when the people go throughout the lands uh, and they're trying to do what's right and they get to a point, uh, hey amen, God lets them step back uh, and he lets them choose what they're going to do. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I'm a firm believer if you've talked to me. Everybody has a choice. What you choose is up to you, Brandon. I don't I can't make that choice for you. Now we'll ever never understand. I'm going somewhere. We'll never understand the divinity of free will. And we'll never really understand the power of Almighty God when He comes down and when He says, I am with you always, uh, even to the end of the world. Uh, and you get to a place in life uh, the way you say, I found uh, that He's faithful. Uh, but where is he now? And at the church of the living God in 2023, sit down for a second. Now, I'm Jacob, but right now I'm going to play Satan for just a moment. Now, here's a phone. This phone is going to represent just a little bit of joy. Just a little bit of joy. And that phone is just a small piece of the puzzle that we call Christianity. That phone is just a small piece of how we love God. That joy of the Lord. It shall renew our strength. Amen. But when the joy and Satan comes to me and he takes it, he's not going to ask you. He's not going to come up to you and say, Amen. Man, can I have this? Can I have that? But he looks at you and he just comes up and he's seeking him. He may devour. And when you're not looking, there he is. There he is. A roaring lion coming down. Now, Brandon, as a Christian, sometimes we take blows. And Satan might even whisper a smidge of scripture in your ear. Well, turn the other cheek. Yeah. You'll be all right. And slowly but surely, Brandon realizes, hey, it's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Amen. But the Bible said a little bit of leaven. Leaven is the whole lump. Amen. And if something small has been taken, amen, that something small needs to be taken back. How in the world, as a church of God, are we going to take it back? Well, Matthew said it, or Jesus said it in the book of Matthew. He said the kingdom of heaven, it suffered violence. But the violent, they take it by force. Just a little bit of joy. Just a little bit of joy. Bible says... Joy unspeakable, full of glory. Well, I took it from you, Brandon. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. You're going to go through things, and the Lord will help you through. And then doubt starts to go through his mind. 
Well, he hangs on to this little thing we like to call peace. And Satan, when he's not paying attention, takes this little thing he likes to call peace. And he takes it away from him when he's not paying attention. And Brandon is already suffering joy. And he's already suffering peace. And we've come to a place to where Brandon is down and he's hurt. He's low. And as the saints of God, sometimes you can tell, amen, when a brother's low. But brother Jason, you never think it's going to happen to you. You can call me wrong if you want to. You never think it's going to happen to you until it does. You never think that Satan's going to come in your life and get your joy and get your peace, get your temperance, and you're left with nothing left but just the Lord hold me. Lord hold me. Amen. But the Bible said that he would be, amen, a strong tower, a mighty fortress, that he would be our shield of faith, that he would be the sword of the spirit. Amen. And if we can get a hold of this, and if we can take these things by force, and then we can be a church that is mighty through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Caitlin, get up here. I asked her before, so I was going to just spring it on her, but now I'm Satan. Come here. Now Brandon's lost joy and peace, but Jason, this is a little different. Now you look at Brandon, you say, it ain't going to happen to me. But your baby, she starts doing some things that aren't pleasing to the eyes of God. Your baby, this is a prayer of your children. And you say, I never thought that it would be me. Raised them in the house of God. Did the things of God. And when push comes to shove, Jason, Satan's got her by the arm. And the only thing you can do about it is sit there. No, I tell you, you don't have to sit there. Because the violent, they take it by force. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to come take it? Or are you going to just sit there. It's up to you. You can take it or you can run. The only problem is when you run away, he doesn't stop coming. Seeking whom he may devour. I've got your joy. I've got your peace. Right. I've got your prayer for your children. Right. Sarah, come up here. Bless your people, Lord. Yeah, Jake. Come on. Get up, Get up here. Now, Dad, that's your baby, right? Jason, yeah. that's your baby, right? right. What are you going to do about it? That's what I want to know. Now, here's the problem. Now, Jason, I'm taller than you. Might be a smidge broader than you. You wear my hand-me-down, so I know you're a little bit smaller than me. Now, Daddy might be a little bit bigger than me in the gut, but I'm taller than you, and I'm younger than you. And there's things that Satan will say. There's no way you're going to get away with this. Yeah. Come on. There's no way that these things are ever going to leave my grasp. And there's no way, Sarah, amen, that you can keep your children from going out and doing the things of this world. He will tell you there's no way that you can stop these things that are going on. But Jesus said in a verse just as simple as this, the violent, they take it by force. Oh, yes. They take it by force. So what are we going to do about it? As a church of the living God, read through the Bible. A woman with an issue of blood for 12 years. Jesus had already passed by where she was and she had to catch up. She goes through the crowd forcefully knowing that she's going to get a touch. Yes. 
But sometimes you don't know if you're going to get to him or not. Right. You say, God, I need you where I'm at. God, I need you to move. And if you'll listen to that still small voice, there's sometimes Brandon, he says, maybe I just need you to move. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's good. We've used God as a crutch long enough. We've used God as our something that we just lean on when everything gets rough. But sometimes he's there, but we've got to take it by force. Amen. Now, it's yours for the taking. So I've got two children up here. And if you really love them, you're going to come get them. The only thing is you've got to get through me. So you've got to choose right now. You're going to come get her or you're going to leave her up here. That's up to you. Hey, man, you can come on if you want to. If you don't, you can just sit there. That's up to you. Hey, man, but you better not think in any way that I'm going to let you go easily. You better not think that you're going to get her without a fight. But the Bible said that the violent, they take it by force. So go ahead, try. Yo, go ahead, try. I dare you. I double dog dare you. Go ahead, try. Try. Yeah, you might have a hold. When the problem gets in your hands and you get it back, that's not when Satan stops fighting you. Amen. David said, Amen. I've seen the Lord. Amen. But until I get into his presence, Amen. Satan is on my back. Amen. So I'm still here fighting. She's not going to amount to nothing. Amen. You might think you have her back, but there's no way in this world. Amen. But the violent take it by force. And there's any way uh, that you can get away from me, uh, you might as well go ahead and try. Yeah, right. You're exactly right. The violent take it by force. That's right. There's something to do. You see, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. This has been taken from me. Satan has taken this from me. Oh, yeah. A couple of years ago, he's testified about it, so I'm going to say it. Anxiety, depression, couldn't hardly eat, lost a bunch of weight. You know why? It's because of me. Yeah. 